Hi, welcome to Tea with Jan. I am so excited. We are diving back into our interview series. And today I am excited to bring to you the co-hosts of a podcast, a tea-related podcast, of course. The podcast, Geek Steep. So if you think of tea and, you know, geeky fandom and put them together with two spectacular co-hosts and you have yourself a wonderful show, (laughs) it is just delightful. And don't worry if you're kind of like, Jan, I'm not really into Star Trek, Star Wars and all of those superheroes with the capes. No worries. I'm typically not either. And I love this podcast. It steeps up very well. (laughs) Let's just dive in, learn a little bit more about what Geek Steep is, as well as the co-hosts. Let's go. Oh, I love your fancy girl. What? It's the cup I got from Jan. Oh. So good. Bravo. That's amazing. All right. Welcome, Marika and Kelly, Geek Steep. So happy to have you guys here. Can you please just start us off with your pronouns, your proper name in case I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, because that's my thing, and your relationship to each other? Yeah, for sure. Uh, My name is Kelly. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, My name is Marika. I also use she, her pronouns. And I've known Kelly for three years now, and we both work at David's Tea, and we're both giant nerds and tea geeks. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is about it. I remember meeting Marika in like the context of work and thinking, oh, wow, she seems like she's got a lot of shared interests, but she's too cool to be my friend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> And you soon found out how untrue that was. <laughs> I'm not cool. I love that. All right. What is everybody drinking? I am drinking a good old standby for me, which is coconut oolong from, uh, from David's Tea. I, I have a lot of David's Tea at home. <laughs> um, I just really, I love this tea. Like, really crushing hard on this tea. It's on a lovely uh, oolong base. It's like side rolled oolong, Um, very green, but it's got a kind of sticky rice note at the end. And the coconut isn't like a fruity coconut or it's just like the, the, the flesh of the coconut is just a really nice hint of coconut, sticky rice and a green oolong right after. It works any time. It's not like a tropical tea that's like more summer or winter. It's absolute comfort. Um, Yeah, that's what's in my cup. Love that. Kelly? I am forever indecisive. So I have two teas today. Oh my gracious, I love it. I picked one in honor of Jan so I've got my cup that I got from you thank you beautiful thing and I'm drinking wintergreen wonderland which I know is one of your favorites (laughs) I watched your caffeine free advent video last night and was like okay I need to need to pull this one out we have the shared advent obsession uh this is the perfect (laughs) tea to drink but then also we're geek steep. So like it felt wrong to not do something fandom-y. Right. So in my big mug, I have a tea called Book of Flowers, which is from a company called Black Lotus Tea. And it is a critical role themed tea. Okay. I mean, of course, Kelly, you're I'm always like so proud of my parents. <laughs> I'm always, so, I'm like, I am killing it. This is the pairing. And Kelly just like, oh, so casually goes, so this is actually the perfect tea for this moment. And <laughs> you can't argue with me because you just heard my description of it. Well done. A, well it's done, Kelly. All what to do. It's not what you meant to do. It's naturally who you are. And I love you for it. Because you're not boasting. You're not trying to put anyone. You're just like, oh, oh, were you looking for the perfect tea for this moment? Here it is. Just poop. In the perfect cup. In the perfect, in the perfect cup. 
because you've thought it out because you think before you speak as opposed to me who's never learned how to do that and <laughs> I'm gonna say this a lot Kelly I love you so much so Aww, so sweet <laughs> <clears throat> I am drinking David's tea oh. coffee prayer <laughs> Which is like your other well-known favorite. I know this is like one of your top, top teas. Completely. Yes. Yeah. Like just, yeah, I can't, I can't get enough of it. See the wintergreen wonderland. Am I saying that right? Cause sometimes I get them backwards and I'm yeah, always like, okay. Nailed it. Nailed it. Um, I, I only have like maybe this much left and it's just like, okay, I can have a small cup of it tonight. <laughs> I'm like, <sighs> <laughs> yeah I actually have an interesting connection to coffee pu'er because I first visited a David's Tea as a customer like the first time I entered a David's Tea as a customer in like 2012 because I'd been in China before that um I walked in and I was like oh nice bright colors you know just kind of but I was I had my own tea company at the time. So I was snooping, like, let's call it what it is. I was snooping. I was just like, what are they doing? You know? And, um, the tea guide like so nicely came up to me and said, would you like to sample a tea? And I was like, Oh, sure. And she was like, it's coffee poor. And I almost, I, I think I, it registered in my face and the look was how dare you, ma'am, this is a tea shop. You know, like, it's just, just like, like green screen, just like, of, yeah, screen like, of death just does not and I was like you. I'm not interested thank you I mean first of all coffee gives me indigestion so like I genuinely like wasn't interested but there was just like I mean this was at a time where I was only <laughs> drinking straight teas and I just on my high horse you know like really on my high horse like I would never partake in your coffee you know so that's my coffee who <laughs> are story <laughs> oh gracious change, change my mind eventually people okay. will people change you know yes. but, yeah. do you like it now <laughs> um not not particularly um it's not it's it's a good tea that's the thing is like okay oh, we're already diving into like the the psychology that is marika right like there's there's three people living within me um, when I'm tasting a tea, there's the personal taste, there's Marika, who's just, you know, and then there's the professional taster who's going to taste the tea and determine like, is this well balanced? What is the story this tea is trying to tell me? Where is this tree tea trying to take me? Like, what is it? What is it conveying what it wants to convey? Is its purpose well established? And then there's the person in me who just like wants to start a tea party and is like, I may not like it, but I'm going to get everyone around me to drink it. Like this is going to get the party started, you know? I love it. So I don't think there's, it's very rare that there's a tea where I'm like, nope, like all three personalities are like, no, nope, I'm not doing any of this. Um, so coffee poor, I don't personally drink it. Cause as I say, it reminds me of indigestion because of the coffee. <laughs> um, but in terms of balance, it's probably the most well-balanced coffee flavored tea I've ever had. It's, it's just got a really nice equilibrium. And in terms of sharing it with people, as you well know, it, it, it hits all the mark. Like people really enjoy this tea. So two thirds of me likes this tea. It's the very long form answer to a brief question that you asked me. <laughs> Two out of three Marikas like this tea. Two out of three Marikas like this tea. Exactly. Two out of three <laughs> Marikas would recommend this tea. Which That's is more, great. It's more than 50%. That's a pass. Right? Exactly. Yes. I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Can we um, have you guys kind of explain your childhood? I'm always so interested in childhood. I don't know. Maybe it's because of my crappy childhood. <laughs> This is going to say, how much, are you my therapist? Like how much childhood trauma am I supposed to unpack on this? <laughs> so just a brief, <laughs> just a brief snippet of childhood how trauma. How did you, from, you know, from birth until today? <laughs> Sorry. Kelly, you want to go first? <laughs> we shouldn't laugh. It's just like, of all the things that I was like ready yeah, to me too. Her, that was the thing I was least expecting to hear you say, but it's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. This is what makes a good interviewer. 
Let's do it. Kelly, you go first because you know me. I'm going to take over. So, like. uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up in Saskatchewan. So in the prairies, um, we grew up like lowerish uh, class, like not high income. So I didn't have a lot of exposure to, I mean, a lot just in general my exposure to things was limited uh but I ended up discovering like uh Spider-Man as a small child and that really stuck with me and eventually it led to greater exploration of like superheroes and comics and things like that in high school um and really high school is I, I think we all can probably relate to this a little bit high school is kind of where you just explore shit you know you ask questions you haven't asked previously you try new experiences um and for me that was you know really branching out and seeing the vast realm of like fandom out there and you know comics uh tv shows dungeons and dragons role-playing uh the non-sexual guys thank you <laughs> So my brain went. I'm like, yeah. I'm kind of like society of for creative anachronism, medieval LARPing, like <laughs> Um, and with that, also eventually became uh, an interest in tea and an exploration of tea and flavor. And you know, as someone who lived off a very, um, I mean, I'm just gonna call call it as it is shitty diet uh and like realm of food growing up like a lot of you know no name brand boxed canned goods um not unseasoned foods like the whitest of the white cheap broke people foods uh tea ended up being a gateway for me i think in terms of like food and beverage just in general and it was the mass range of flavors things i'd never heard of or tried and, you know, buying a tea that's flavored like red velvet cake is like a buck for a cup of tea. Buying a red velvet cake is like eight bucks for a cake, right? So you got to explore flavors and things like that. Cheaper, honestly. Even though loose leaf tea is considered like a specialty product and is viewed as very expensive in terms of tea because like bag tea and stuff like that. Uh, is dirt cheap when you compare it to its non-tea counterparts it was a very cost-effective way to explore a lot of flavors very quickly that's wonderful thank you so i born and raised montrealer um my mom's from trinidad my dad is french and french canadian so i grew up in a really multicultural home and i had a very different food experience from kelly because my dad's a chef so we ate really 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 well because most of the time we'd get leftovers from the parties that he had catered <laughs> so um my exploration of food started at a really 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 young age um and it's in tandem with my geekdom because my dad is a trekkie like a huge star trek fan and so i grew up with star trek just being part of my life and i kind of only focused on star trek for until i was about 16 and then i started discovering um science fiction from like the 50s and 60s so heinlein um philip k dick asimov and that's i'm more of a science fiction kind of person and like social science fiction just looking at the future and like what humanity could achieve um and my grandmother always used to make earl grey from for us when we came home from school and it was the tea that captain picard also drank on star trek the next generation so in my mind tea was earl grey tea was just earl grey there was one tea until I was nine years old and we were visiting family in Paris and I went to the Mariage Frère Tea House and my dad asked me what tea I wanted and I looked at him like he was crazy and I was like, I want tea, I want Earl Grey. And he showed me the menu from Mariage Frère and there were hundreds of teas and my brain just went like, just like, what are you talking about? 
Um, and that's kind of where the obsession began. Cause like to Kelly's point, it's a super accessible thing. It's something that even as a nine-year-old, like I could turn the kettle on and make a cup of tea and make something really, really flavored for myself. And growing up in a house with a chef, uh, the intimidation factor of the kitchen is huge. Like you can't make a tuna fish sandwich without him or, you know, someone else coming in and being like, you're not gonna put carrots. Why are you using that mustard? We have like five mustards. Why not? you? It's like, it's just way too much. So with tea, I had control over the flavors I was going to make for myself. And um, yeah, that's how I just really got into it is I was able to completely personalize, personalize from choice of tea to steeping an experience that was entirely my own. So, yeah, that's wonderful. Very different um, upbringings for sure, but yeah. so interesting. And that's, I think, oh, see, that's what I love about life is that it's like, you know, it doesn't matter what your past is. And then people end up, you know, finding each other and yeah, not like that. Just to set the record straight, you guys are friends, right? <laughs> We're friends. Freaking <laughs> happily married. Happily <laughs> married. <laughs> it doesn't mean that um the other day kelly read some copy to me and kelly writes beautifully and i and she said you know what do you think of this copy and i said i think i'm married and you need to stop flirting with me so <laughs> so we're we're friends we're good friends um but uh yeah who cares what those labels are you know what i mean like it's all good <laughs> okay but just for our viewers so that they can for our viewers it. Good understanding. Happy. Yes. I'm happily exactly. married with two children. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. <laughs> so Geek Steve, can we talk about how this became, how, like, what is Geek Steve first so that our audience understands uh, what we're talking about? Geek Steve is a celebration of tea and fandom. We connected, obviously, working at a tea company, and we have that shared love, but Within our office, there are like three people who are like really, really like nerdy and geeky and like the same kind of TV and film and comics, et cetera, as we do. And we are two of them. <laughs> it's, it's small, uh, that circle within our office. So I think we naturally gravitated towards each other. And anytime a new Marvel movie came out or, you know, like uh, a new TV series that was especially like fantasy or sci-fi leaning, we would find each other. We work in different departments for the record. Like we work within the broader spectrum of the T department, but we don't really work together daily. Uh, so we would have to like create these moments within our office to find an excuse to talk to each other and just go full-blown nerd rant about these exciting like things that no one else in our work circle cared about <laughs> to be blunt. Uh, and then you know the world got a little different in March of 2020 and we couldn't do that anymore like at all and also Mariko was on mat leave at the time too so even more so like there was the added layer of you know there's just a lot keeping us from having those conversations and it was Mariko's suggestion initially um I think I was on the metro and you just messaged me one day and we're like hey would you do a podcast yeah I um the I don't know how my brain works I'm just gonna put that out there I don't know how my brain works I don't know why it comes out with the ideas that it does um and not all of them are good like you know but I I missed having those conversations with Kelly I missed you know there was a bunch of fandom coming out and I you know my husband's also a giant nerd and so I had him uh, but it's just different when I would talk with Kelly, it'd be like a different interaction. And I just thought we should start a podcast. And I just texted her and I said, Hey, are you interested in starting a podcast? Because it wasn't something that I thought I would do without her or with someone else. It was, it was kind of Kelly or no one. It was going to happen with Kelly or, or not happen at all. 
And you messaged me back, like, what, like about tea? I don't know. If the, I don't think that's how you meant it, but like, that's definitely how I read it. I was like, like, what, Marika? Like, what are we going to do? <laughs> talk about tea. And I was like, yeah, but we're also going to talk about like nerdy stuff because we'd always commented in the office and to each other that there is this connection between people who are into fandoms in a really serious way and people who are into tea. Um, there's a kind of needing to explore further, needing to go beyond the surface, needing to have an encyclopedic knowledge of Star Wars, like there's a, and a complete devotion to the Gong Fu ceremony. Like there, there's, there is this overlap and we've never been able to quite define it. And I thought that would be a really good adventure to go on because it's something that's going to need a lot of exploration. I don't know that we're ever going to find the answer. It's kind of like working in the tea world. You know, you're never going to know it all. You're never going to learn everything there is to know about tea. And I don't know that there is a straight line A to B answer for why fandoms and tea work together so, so well. And so... That's what makes it great because there isn't an answer. You get to continue that journey as long as you want to be on it. Yeah. So that's kind of, and Kelly said yes. And I think that very night by like nine o'clock, we'd already hashed out like the entire format, the entire first season, like it just kind of flowed out of us really, really fast. And then it was just like a month of like, how do microphones work? You know, it was just like, we had no, no idea how any of that worked. Um, but in terms of like the the concepts, we came to conclusions really, really fast. And that was just a great omen because I think as as different and as distinct as we are in terms of background and personality and thought processes, there's a few things where we just have like kismet, where it's just like we'll come together really quick and be like, yeah, that's the road we should go down. And that's just a really um, gratifying thing. I think we're both kind of outsiders. Like we're both you know, outliers, like I always say, like I'm a biracial, bisexual, bilingual woman of color. Like we, I don't have a team, you know what I mean? Like there's no gaggle of us <laughs> running around. And I think Kelly's background is really specific and interesting. Um, but we kind of went down the same path together and it's just really nice to have a, to have a friend. <laughs> nice. So for, I guess, if you're not familiar with our format, I know, we, we know you are, but it's a, it's a cycle for our episodes. So we'll have one episode where it's a fandom uh, of whatever media that both Marika and I know and are familiar with and love. And we'll explore a chunk of that fandom. And as we explore that, we pick a tea to pair along with it. Uh, and then we discuss afterwards. What do we love about this? What do we not love? Why did we pick our tea? Did it work or not? And the next week I get to teach her a fandom that she doesn't know. And she gets to explore something for the first time. And I kind of lead that discussion the week after. It's the reverse. And then my favorite weeks, the most chaotic weeks, are the <laughs> weeks where it's a fandom that we just pick randomly that neither of us know and we explore it together for the first time. And we've discovered some pretty fun things doing it that way. It's about broadening your horizons because I think you can talk about something you love or try to convince someone of something that you love very, very easily. But one of the things I was missing during the pandemic was Comic-Con. And when you go to, I don't know if you've ever been to Comic-Con, Jan, or? I haven't, but my family has been. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, to me, it's, it's like going to church, I guess, for like some people, because you walk into this environment and there's hundreds of people there and everybody's into something different. Some people are into fandoms you're into. Sometimes there's just a gaggle of people. You don't even know what they are dressed as or what they represent. But the sentiment I get every single time I go to Comic-Con is there is just love. Everyone is there because they love something so profound profoundly that they've dressed up as it that they want to share it that they want to bring you into that fantasy with them um and it's really great to find like other doctor who fans or other star trek fans but it's even better when you're just standing in line with someone from a fandom you've never heard of and they share their passion and their love for that fandom with you 
And so, yeah, I agree with Kelly. The new, the episodes where we do new fandoms are just always like, we have no direction, no guide. We're kind of swimming. Um, but it's a lot of fun to, to just broaden our horizons and see like, is this something I would be into? So. I have personally uh, started different shows, started reading different things because of your guys' podcast. Oh. It's like, I'm not like into that world, I guess, normally. And it's so interesting. You guys, yeah, you guys just open up my eyes and I love that. Hey. For our audience, can we explain what fandom is? It's sure. a- yeah, it's a pretty broad tent. <laughs> yeah, they... it's a loaded question, and yeah. we've debated this too between ourselves because I think Marika and I have slightly different definitions as well, uh, which has been really interesting as we planned, uh, well, planned the first season and then went into planning the second season. Uh, and I personally define a fandom as any collection of people with a shared and passionate interest. Okay. And I know that's not necessarily the same definition that Marika has. Okay. Yeah, I, I accept Kelly's definition because I think any, any definition of any subject that allows more people to be included is something like ultimately I'm for. I think that I just, when we started this project, fandom to me meant that you had to be a fan of something that had either a science fiction or fantasy element. It didn't have to be strong, but it had to be there. Um, So I didn't, but I also didn't really understand the world of anime. I still don't. I mean, Kelly's still holding my little baby hand and walking me through this because I'm like, what is happening here? (laughs) I don't know. Um, But there are ardent fans of these different mediums and uh, I I still see fandom as very like Star Star Trek v. Star Wars. Um, But but Kelly's always trying to help me like expand that definition and I'm more than happy to to meet any group who's as passionate about the, the thing they love as I am about the thing I love, so. I don't remember what episode it was in but I used this metaphor, I think, at one point uh, for one of our recordings. And uh, to me, like, I guess my example would be if you are the biggest fan ever of, uh, let's say, Lana Del Rey. I'm calling out our friend Cody. <laughs> at the long drunk. If you are the world's biggest Lana Del Rey fan and you go on Lana Del Rey forums and you buy all of the Lana Del Rey music and merchandise and you know you go to concerts and you wait in line for album signings how is that any different than someone who is a massive let's say Harry Potter fan who buys all of the books and has a bunch of merchandise and goes to the film premieres and waits in line to get their act favorite actor to sign their book. It's the same process. You've just swapped out the material, right? I, I really like the, I guess, inclusiveness of, you know, everything. So <laughs> I, I find that very interesting. And I was always, I think that was the biggest thing for me when I heard your guys's podcast was coming out. I was like, oh, I, I, you know, I love you guys, but I don't know if I can do this because it's like not, not my style of things. But then honestly, your guys's voices are just so well together. Um, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and there's some podcasts where it's like the voices are so similar it's kind of like, okay, who's talking now? Like what's happening? And your guys' voices are like completely different, which is like brilliant for a podcast. I am so happy for that. <laughs> but then you guys just have just such great energy together. And I just, ugh, I really like your guys' podcast. So you've completed season one and it ended in February and anybody can go back and listen to all those and kind of dive into it if they've missed it. When is season two coming? I have been like waiting. Like I'm like, every once in a while I go on and I'm like stalking. (laughs) So uh, we know we've kept people waiting and we're so sorry, 
But our second season launches this Thursday, September 23rd, which is the one year anniversary of when we launched last year. That is amazing. I'm so excited. We are too. We're starting off pretty strong. Um, Kelly, do you want to tell everyone our special? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're doing things a little differently for season two. So we just finished explaining our format. Uh, but surprise, we're changing it a little bit. So we're adding a step into the rotation. So in addition to both of us episodes, new episodes, and the episodes where we're introducing each other, we now have a viewer pick episode as well in the rotation for the fandoms that people wanted us to check out and try. And we're going to have what we're calling guest peeps as well. And our premiere, episode one, is a guest geek episode with our dear friend, I know we all love her, uh, Tori of Simply Delicious. That's amazing. Oh, this is so wonderful. I can't, I can't wait. This is, yeah. Are you going to... No sneak peeks about what it is. You can leave us in suspense. It's a superhero thing. We'll keep superhero it. thing. Okay. The bag. There's so many of them. I get them there all. Are. <laughs> there are. Like how you said that, like you're like you're over it. You're like, oh, that is. So, I, don't make me learn more. Make so many. <laughs> they just never end. They just keep coming out. Where are they buying all these capes? <laughs> How much spandex is there? <laughs> so what are your guys' favorite fandoms? Well, we have one in common. Our pilot episode for season one was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which I think is of our shared fandoms, the one we are the most passionate about for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that's kind of when we started really getting into the nitty gritty of it. Because before then, our fandoms kind of didn't line up. But with Buffy, we both have kind of an encyclopedic knowledge of like every episode. And so we were able to be like, oh, and then this episode and that episode. Um, I am forever a Trekkie. I mean, I, I got my Star Trek tattoo when I was 17. I absolutely believe that humanity is capable of more, that it will get better, that we will coexist peacefully, that we will not impose our culture onto others and we will let them be who they are. And through that diversity, we will become stronger. And uh, that's like, calm. I, I believe in that utopia. I think we can do it and uh, start like Star Trek forever. Star Trek forever, man. Oh, see, that makes me want to watch Star Trek now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can send you a few suggestions. Don't you worry. <laughs> it seems like there's so many different, like, Star Trek. I just, I find, yeah, there's a lot. There is I mean, a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> Kelly's already, like, <laughs> exasperated. She's like, oh, my God. It's been going since 1966. I mean, this is a really, oh. really long-term fandom, but... Um, the new Star Treks are a little bit more pew pew, you know, there's a little bit more, um, but the thing that really continues to draw me to Star Trek, I mean, growing up as a multiracial child, having a main character in a show from the 60s uh, be a Black woman who was respected, who wasn't cleaning anybody's house, who wasn't a punchline, who was an officer, like it, it really impacted me. It really, really impacted me. And that message that like, we are all created equal and we should all be given that opportunity to like self-actualize and be the best of ourselves. And it's actually through that, that humanity will just stop being awful to each other. Um, and you know, there's, there's a lot of episodes where it's just pew pew because who doesn't like a little, you know, <laughs> a little space adventure. Um, but it's a show about it's a show about being better and it's a show about coming together and it's a show about that you know a lot of the times when you see things happen in the future it's always really bad and it's people of color are not represented and people of different sexual orientations are not represented and people of different gender identities are not represented and 
it was a show that was ahead of its time and it continues to go there. And I just, I prefer to be optimistic. I prefer to think that we will get there than to, you know, explore dystopian future after dystopian future after dystopian future. Like I'm kind of over it, you know? Mm. So um, I love a lot of different fandoms, but Star Trek is, is the thing that I, I will always go back to always, always, always. And I, I think I, I, I think I'll manage to convince Kelly of it. I mean, I started off kind of rough. I, I, I started with, you know, a series that isn't um, <laughs> typical of what I've just described because I want to kind of come at it at a different angle. But I'm hoping that the next Star Trek episode, I'll, I'll, I'll start to get her in there. <laughs> there you go. Sure. Uh, I naturally gravitate towards superhero movies and comics. Um, I mean, my biggest one, the my my Star Trek essentially is Spider Man, and that's the one that I always come back to in all of its different forms, whether it's the movies or the comics or many of the spinoff comics have been really great, uh, like. Uh, the ones with Miles Morales or Spider Gwen is great. Um, I really love the symbiotes, so I dive quite heavily into anything to them. Um, but I also really like Squirrel Girl and the Runaways and um, uh, Miss Marvel, which are kind of considered new age Marvel comics. They are comics that have come out within our lifetime and that started within our lifetime and they have some really refreshing modern takes on superheroes as a genre and outside of that I'm a huge Dungeons and Dragons fan I am definitely the anime half of our duo Um, I've been gradually pulling Marika into different types of anime we'll find one eventually that she likes (laughs) It's not that I don't like them. It's just, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a different way of looking at the world. Let me tell you, it's yeah. a very different way of looking at the world. And it, it takes a, it takes a, a special eye to, to see it for what it is. I understand the appeal, but I haven't found one that I would like re-steep as we, you know, we're always judging whether a fandom is worth worthy of re-steeping. And I, I haven't been like, oh, I need to see like, princess jellyfish again i'm like i saw it once i'm good (laughs) it's very good i don't need to go there again (laughs) yes yeah there's a few things that i will actually rewatch, but um yeah wait can i ask a question no (laughs) (laughs) i mean this is your rodeo but like i i i'm curious like is what if you had a fandom what would your fandom be <clears throat> oh my god no Arrested way development oh right. my god that is that is such a good show. <laughs> oh there's always money in the banana stand there's always money exactly. in the banana stand <laughs> I think oh. it actually says that. Oh no, it's like yeah, frozen. Original, frozen original frozen banana. Frozen banana. <laughs> that show is next level good. Yeah. Next level good. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. See, T people always have a fandom. There's there's always something, you know. What do you what do you I'm, I'm interviewing you for Geek Steve, apparently? What do you drink usually when you watch Arrested Development? anything <laughs> i thought you were gonna say like a like a, like a banana flavored tea i don't know it's <laughs> anything you're watching it so often that you're just like okay. i'm just like my cheeks hurt so much <laughs> why it's, um... oh, okay. <laughs> in a very good way um okay this might be Jeanette more than you, but I know uh, Friends is also a thing that you play a lot in your household, right? Yeah. You had friends. your Friends Advent last year, which was so fun to watch you guys open and go through. Yes. Yeah. And um, there's there's very few things that I will actually rewatch. So Arrested Development, um, Grace and Frankie. I can watch yeah. Grace and Frankie like on rerun. And um, I think I just, I don't know, like I have like a kindred spirit with like older ladies. <laughs> like, <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. 
Are you going to say the Golden Girls? I watched the Golden Girls. And the Golden Girls. Yeah, we did that during uh, the first part of the pandemic when we were working from home. That was our lunch uh, show every day. Can I confess something? I feel like a really bad gay saying it, but I've never seen an episode of the Golden Girls. Wait, is Golden Girls a gay thing? Okay. (laughs) I... As usual, I'm like the bisexual who like it like does who's just like into these things but doesn't know like it's part of the wheelhouse, you know, like it's part of the thing. I just grew up watching Golden Girls. It was on after Star Trek. And like that's how that happened. For some reason, it was Saturday nights at seven, Star Trek the Next Generation, and then I'd go to CBS and watch the Golden Girls. So hmm. they were just inextricably linked in my mind. And I watched it this morning. And then I put on Star Wars. So it's all crazy together. I'm trying to get my kids into it. I'm trying to get my kids into longer form storytelling. So I put on Return of the Jedi, which I think Kelly will agree is the most Saturday morning cartoon friendly of the Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. And she and and my eldest watched it. She watched it. She watched part of it. And I was Mm -hmm. like, look at Princess Leia. She's very strong. Look at this strong female character who doesn't have a superpower and doesn't have a weapon, but she takes out Jabba the Hutt. She's like, okay. I'm like, parenting. Yeah, wait a minute, it's educational. (laughs) 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 Let me tell you what you're learning here. You're learning how to be a strong woman. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, gracious. I love it. I love it. Is there anything that you guys would like the audience to know about either of you guys? (laughs) I mean, I think if people want to know more about us, which I can't imagine because I feel like I just like opened myself up completely here. Um, But if they are interested, I mean, I think Geek Steep, not to like plug our brand or anything. I think Geek Steep is the- Plug away. <laughs> it's, I think it's just the perfect place to do it because we do put a lot of work into every episode. Like we will send each other outlines. We'll send each other ideas. We'll, there's a lot of back and forth before we actually like hit the record button. But I think because of our relationship, you know, halfway through the episode, usually we kind of go off script and we kind of go with wherever the conversation has led. And through that, you eventually learn a lot more about us. Um, and, and your age difference. Like, what is that? There's two things that we learned last Jokes. season. Apparently, we both have an unknown obsession with Lapsang Sushong smoked tea. <laughs> never, I'm 39, never put that together. But like, it kept coming up and it's like, is this our seventh smoked tea? Like, what is this? And I never think about my age difference with anybody because I'm like an eternal child. I'm like a five-year-old. So like, I don't, I never, I'm like, oh, I don't get that because of my age. But like, I'd say things to Kelly, like, like I'd, I'd be like, I don't know. I just say things like, oh man, remember when the first X-Men came out? And she'd be like, no. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, since I was four. Oh, oh, oh. Like, I was <laughs> I was like a full-fledged adult when I saw this movie and you know you pass it off and you think okay it's good it's an off-sided comment in one episode but it kept coming up especially like I would say things to Kelly and she'd be like I have no idea what you're talking about like I'd be like remember the Clinton administration like, that was nuts and she's like no why would I remember that <laughs> and um so yeah it kind of, it's kind of become a running joke but it kind of is only noticeable when we talk about fandoms honestly I think everywhere else it's not something that comes up a lot but if I have a reference from like you know remember how Terminator 2 changed the movie landscape and again she just looks at me like I feel like I've explained this to you no Marika I don't remember that (laughs) (laughs) I remember Jeanette and I were driving in the car and we were listening to your guys's podcast and you know she's like oh this is really good and everything you guys mentioned the age difference and she just couldn't stop laughing like she was just like one I had no idea like she's like I I did not like 
<laughs> I wasn't born. <laughs> yeah, this wasn't born. What are you talking about? Um, I think. I think the other thing I wanted to say though is, um, you know, as much as, as much fun as it is to talk about ourselves, um, I think the more you explore why you love something, be it tea or fandoms, and if you can do that with a friend, like all the better. But I think we can all agree, at least here in this in this Zoom call, that um, if you if you learn more about tea and you dive more into the world of tea, you ultimately discover something about yourself because you get to figure out how you like to take it, how, you know, what's your cup of tea is literally, you know, the axiom that gets used and everything. And so, you know, if, even if people don't listen to our podcast or anything, I really hope that, especially in these times, they give themselves permission to learn more about themselves through something that they love and that's kind of like the truest expression of geek steep. And I mean, Kelly, tell me if I'm like overstepping and I'm no, giving us like a mantra, like I'm just saying like pulling a mantra out of nowhere. But, um, but for me, it's been really, really fulfilling. I've, I've really discovered a b- bunch of different aspects about myself and it makes you, uh, it makes your world less myopic. And I just, I really encourage everyone to, to just try and do that. You know, as long as what you love is, hurting no one and there is no victim then you should absolutely try to try to do that and hey if you do it through star trek whatever i'm not going to take credit for it or anything <laughs> yeah, i think that's been one of my favorite things uh and again it links back to i think our best episodes are the episodes where we're doing something or watching something that neither of us know anything about because we really really get to take a step back and put on the lens of someone else and just think you know why are people into this why why do people like this and you know sure sometimes it's about uh magical Japanese animals with you know testicles that do incredible (laughs) things uh and sometimes you can apply the same logic on a really big scope and you know translate that to everyday life I love that. You two are so wonderful. And I am so overjoyed that you guys allowed me to pick your guys' brain, chat with you guys, and most importantly, introduce you guys to anybody that's been living under a rock that watches my YouTube channel that has not heard of you guys yet. So thank you guys so much. Any final words? Uh, Yeah, always be plugging. You can check us out at Geek Steep on Instagram and across our different socials. Uh, and we're on all of the big uh, podcast streaming services like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. If you want to dive really deep into Mariko's psyche, uh, the Star Trek episode is an excellent one. If you want a me episode, I would recommend either Spider-Man or Princess Jellyfish. And I think some of our most, I, I, I'm going to speak for you, Marika. I think some of our yeah. most fun episodes, our most insane ones, are Palm Poco or Tomb Raider. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because we don't always love what we watch. And sometimes we're shocked by what we see. And so those are always kind of fun. But I mean, I just want to say, you know, thank you so much for, you know, interviewing viewing us or talking to us or spending time with us because it's just um it's um it's really really nice to be part of that community um and it's really nice to talk to someone who who gets it it's nice it's just a nice opportunity so thank you so much thank you guys both so much and i will leave everything linked down in the description below until next time take care bye Bye.